Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at a few more heresies and heretical views denounced by the Church, and this time, Donatism. During the early centuries of the Church, the major obstacle which Christians needed to deal with was open persecution of the faithful by the Romans. Technically, it was illegal to be a Christian in the Roman Empire for hundreds of years. Sometimes, it would just kind of be a law on the books, which wasn't enforced very often, while at other times, Christians would be actively hunted down and executed, or fed to lions. The difference was usually due to whether a specific authority figure wanted to spend the time and effort on Christians. One of the worst persecutions was the one that began with the Roman Emperor Diocletian in 303 AD. Under his persecution, Christians suffered and died because of their refusal to follow the Roman religious practices. However, individual governors interpreted Diocletian's orders differently from one another. The Roman governor of North Africa, for instance, generally decided not to press Christians to follow the Roman religion. Instead, he asked for only one thing, that they turn over their scriptures to him as a token to show that they were renouncing their Christian faith. Well, of course, such an action was still apostasy, and many Christians still rightly refused to do anything that would indicate a renouncing of their faith. This led to division in the church in North Africa, because many priests did what the Roman governor had told them to do, and were scorned by the other Christian people for it, who stood by their faith. The unfaithful ones were called traditors, meaning one who hands over. That's where we get the word traitor from. However, while there was some division during the persecution, it only got worse when the persecution ended and the traditors wanted to return to the faith, and, in the case of traditor priests, continue saying Mass and administering the other sacraments. The Donatists were Christians who said, Absolutely not. Why should you be part of the same church as us? You turned your back on the faith. The position of the Donatists was not only that the traditors didn't belong in the church, but that in the cases where they were priests, their sacraments were invalid. This led to all sorts of confusion about who was a priest and who wasn't, who was a bishop and who wasn't, who'd been baptized and who hadn't been, whether one had been to Mass that week or not, or even to the question of whether your sins were really forgiven, or whether you were even really married to your spouse. A council was called only a year after the decree called the Edict of Milan, which made Christianity legal in the Empire. And at that council, the 314 Council of Arles, Donatism was condemned as a heresy. But Donatists continued to persist in their beliefs for a while after that. Fortunately, St. Augustine began to respond to the position, explaining through his teachings and his writings that the effectiveness of the sacraments came from the priesthood, not from the character of the individual priest. The Bible supports St. Augustine in this position, even spelling out where the effectiveness of the priesthood comes from. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as the other priests, to offer sacrifices first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, in offering himself. For the law maketh men priests who have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, the Son, who is perfected for evermore. Hebrews 7, 26-28 That spells it out pretty clearly. Men who have weaknesses are made priests, but the real power of the priesthood comes to our priests from the high priest who has no sin. So it's not the moral merits of a priest that make the sacraments work. It's the moral merits of Jesus. The priest is needed only because that's what the priesthood was made for by Jesus, passing on his sacraments to us to help bring us to salvation. Next time, who were the Circumcellions? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.